Now on your Eclipse, please create a new Java project. So if you go Eclipse, new Java projects, you can say CSE114 week number six, lab number two. Okay, do that. And then we're going to see under source, let's create a template first for the two dimensional plane. So we will create a new Java class. So class here, and then let's call it point. Okay, remember class name in the Java, in Java is going to be capitalized. Okay, do that. So now, first of all, let's see question one. So question one, we have done the, uh, so we're going to create a new class called point that represents, okay, good. So now, if you want to create a template for the points, you got to think about what are the common characteristics or attributes that every point should have. So here we know that you should have an X, you should have a value for X, you should have a value for Y. That's why in the template level, you have to define these two attributes. So first of all, we're going to say each that uh, each two-dimensional point should have some double attributes of uh, let's say x, and then they should also have some double attributes called y. It's as easy as that. Every point must have an x value and a uh, y value, although the x and y values might be different between from point to point. Yeah. Okay, after we have done that, we have to think about how we are supposed to initialize an, uh, an instance of the points. So whenever you're trying to initialize an instance for the points, you have to tell what's gonna be the x value and what's gonna be the y value, right? So now, that's why we have to do a constructor. So remember to do the uh, constructor, the name of the constructor must, be, must match the name of the class. So you would say point here. Okay, let me put a comments for you. So you can say, that's going to be the constructor. And then we'll say point here, and then the signature is go also going to include the parameters, input parameters. So now, how do you think I should fill in the parameters? Double x, comma, double y. Very good, except, so if you say double x and double y, somehow the x and y here clash with the x and y in the attributes. Yeah. So I would suggest for now, what about just call it a different name? You can say double initial x and double initial y. Yeah, that might be the least confusing way to do it. So, so we we'll say double, let's say init x separate by comma and double initial y. Init. Yeah, init stands for initial. Initial x, initial y. It can be any name y, just don't choose x and y. Just not, uh, let's not clash. Okay, now, enlighten me. How do I initialize x and y using the initial x and initial y? x equals double x. Uh -huh. x Somehow you want to assign to x, right? Equals n and x. Very good. That's very good. And you will do a similar thing for initial y. Yeah, not, not so difficult so far. That means <laughs> if I pass any value to you, then you're going to take it for granted and then assign them. Okay, up to now we can already do some testing. We can actually try to create a separate class and we'll try to manip manipulate the uh, points and see what we can get. So let's uh, do it now. So please create another class in the same package, let's say. So new and then class, let's say point tester. <coughs> oh, bless you. Is it too cold? No. Oh, all right. Okay, good. And in this test class, we are actually going to have a main method. So just remember, later on for your maybe assignment too, you are going to have lots of templates, lots of classes, but you're only going to have one class with the main method. That's going to be the main uh, program to execute. Okay, that's kind of like a new model for you to adopt, but I'm going to explain more in, in class on Monday. But for now, let's uh, just write a main method here. You can type main and let Eclipse to complete that for you. Okay, now we would like to first create a point. Let's say, if you look at task, so now we are already on the second page, I think. Let's have a look at uh, task number four, 4.1. If you see 4.1 there, we're going to go to the point tester class and create an object P1 of type points 
and the initial location should be 0, 2. Okay? Any one of you know how to write this? If you want to somehow create that, first of all, we need to declare what's going to be the type for the variable. So, just like normal declaration point, p1. So remember before, when we were trying to declare variables, we'd say, for example, integer i, integer j, or string s. But now we simply say point p1. It's really the same notation here. And then we're going to use the new keyword to actually say, now we're going to create a new instance from the template point. Point here. And now, if I simply say this, you actually see it's actually underlined by some red line here. It means there's some error. What's the error here? If you actually, for example, if you actually just uh, move your mouse over the red line there, let's see what the error is. The constructor point with empty parameters is undefined. Why? Because if you look in, look back to the point class over here, you see the only constructor we have there does have two parameters required. But over there, when we are trying to use it, we are only given zero parameters. So we have some mismatch here. So you have to conform to the parameter always. So, so here, because we're going to have some initial locations, 0 and 2. So we're going to put 0 and 2. Right? Yes. Uh, I have a question about the main. Uh, how do you do the Eclipse to automatically do the main method? Uh, very quickly. So let's say if you type main here, yes. and then to put control space. Control space. Then that should give you the option. If you uh, main, main should be one of the options. If you click on enter, then it's going to generate. Oh, okay, thank you. Good. Good. Okay. So so far so good. So now we have created P one as an instance of the points. So now. Next question. So we have got some like an instance here, but we'd like to print, print out some information about the points. So for this, we like to say, well, the point P1 is at location 0, 2. How do we do that? So this is some output I would like to have. Let me show you. I would like to have something like this. I would like to have on the console to say point P1 is at location 0, 2. Okay, that's something I would like to have. But how do you have, how do you print it out? So the main thing is really about a zero and two because from point to point, the x and y values might be different, right? So whenever I want to retrieve the value for the attributes, I need to get access to that. And the way to get access to that to use the dot notation. Okay, let me show you. So here you're gonna say system dot out dot print line, and then you can say point, so no, now we know it's P1, that's fine, is at location, so so far we are just writing a string literal, nothing special yet, is at location, start with the parentheses, and now we should get a value for the x for P1. So we say plus, so plus means concatenation with a string. So now we'll say P1, and now get the x value for me from P1. If you simply type the dot, Eclipse will show you what attributes are available for the points, right? You actually see x there and y there. So I would like to get access to x first. After x, we would like to print out a comma, and then we would like to print out the value for y. So now this time, again, we say p1 dot, but we're going to get y. And then plus, and then we get close parentheses. Okay, so far so good. Okay, if we try to run this program here, you actually have point P1 is at location 0 and 2. But since it's double, so that's why point prints out the uh, uh, point 0 as well. So far so good? Good. Okay, so now why don't you do one exercise for me? So let's say, could you also initialize a point called P2 at 3 and 4, and then print out its location for me. Okay, while you're doing this, I'll also do that on the uh, screen, but try to not look at what I'm doing. Okay, and then we'll actually check the answer together. At which point? Uh, let's say P2 at 3, 4. <coughs> How do you do that?
Okay, so point two, P2, and three and four. We do three and four. Okay. It's a different variable, but it's still an instance, right? But it's a different instance, basically. Okay, so now, okay, let's compare. You can see that the, uh, first of all, if you want to just create another instance, you're still going to declare the variable of type point. But now the name of the variable is different. It's called P2 as opposed to P1. And you're still going to use the new keyword to say, I'm going to use this constructor here by passing argument 3 and argument 4. So you can see the argument values I'm trying to pass. As opposed to 0 and 2, now I'm doing 3 and 4. And when I'm trying to print out the location for P2, you can see the way I printed that is actually very similar to what I did before, except now I'm actually trying to access the X attributes from P2 rather than P1. So I'll say P2.X rather than P1.X. So you can see I'm trying to retrieve the same attributes, but depending on which object I'm trying to retrieve, it's going to give me different value. Okay, that's really about object. And okay, good. So far so good. So now let's uh, move on. Let's have a look at uh, task number five. So let's say we would like to somehow to move the points. So because on a two-dimensional space, we might move the points up, down, left, or right by you know changing the value for their x or y value. So let's do something here. So if you go back to the template here, so you can uh, just type with me, or you can see uh, for task number five, I got a code there for you already. So we would like to somehow to move the point to the right, let's say, by some units. First of all, this method is not going to return anything. Okay? But we're going to show you something, uh, some method that will return something. But for this one, it's not going to return anything. In Java, to say that, you just say void. And then you would say move to the right by some units. So that's why I'm going to give one input parameter here. So I would say double here, and then some units. Okay? So we are at the template level here. So now, how would you suggest if I'm trying to move a point to the right, let's say for four units, so which value should you change? Should you change the x value or the y value? x value, right? Very good. So somehow I would like to increment the x value. So here I'm going to change x, just like in the constructor I was also trying to change x. So you would say x is equal to x plus four, uh, sorry, units in this case, because you can see depending on what unit is. The unit here can be 3, can be 4, can be anything, can be any double value. Alternatively, you can also do something like this. You can say x plus equal units. That's just another notation. So could you do move up for me? How do you do move up? Got an error? Sure. Yeah, think about how you do move up. Of course, you're going to change a different attribute. Yeah, always remember for each method, you have to enclose this body by a, a pair of curly braces. Okay, so let's do uh, move up. So to do move up, you have to somehow change the value for the uh, y. So you say void move up, and also it's going to be by some units. Okay, and here you would say y is going to be y plus units, right? That's how you move up. So or you can say y plus equal units. That's, that will also work. Good. Good. So we have defined methods at the template level. So whenever you're done with some method, we'd like to test them so we can see how we can manipulate our instances use the uh, methods. Let's go to point tester there. Remember, so let's see. Let's say we want to do something to P1. Let's say I would like to move P1, let's put in comment, I would like to move P1 
from initially that's 0 to 2 what about uh, what about this 5 10 how do you do that I would like to move point P1 from its from its initial location of 0 to 2 5 10 apparently you need to move up move and then move right or move right and then move up right first of all tell me how many units should you move up eight very good because you can see there's a difference uh, of eight between ten and two and you have to move right uh, for five units right so that means you have to somehow move right for five units and then move up for eight units and it doesn't really matter if you do move right first or move up first it doesn't matter okay what if I can do one for you and do the other one for me so first of all let's say we want we would like to say move up so you want to say I want to move up for P1 again you say P1 dot always use the dot notation if you want to do something specific to the instance so now you can see that uh, in the drop-down list in Eclipse, you got X and Y as before. Also, you have move right and move up, right? So they are already available there for you to use. So let's say we want to move up. So now we would like to move up for eight units, right? So now you can see now we are passing an argument value of eight, which will conform to the parameter type of double that we declare in the uh, template, okay? Move up, so... What's going to be the second step? Complete that for me, please. You're going to say somehow you want to move P1 to the right for five units. How would you say that? Yeah, and then five, right? Yeah, very good. Yeah. So P1, the move. You can see Eclipse is very useful in completing the code for you. Move right for five. And I would suggest the following. Let's say copy this line here where we were trying to print out the location okay so this is what you can do put something here after you move to the move up and put something here after you move right okay and then and here you can say system dot out dot print line you can say after moving p1 up for eight units you're just trying to make your output more readable and then you can say right before you print out for for that after moving p1 right for five units okay so here you can see after we have moved p1 up for eight units then we're going to print out its location and then after we have moved uh, p1 right for five minute uh, five units then we're going to print out its location okay if you try to run the program you're going to see this you can see initially the location is uh, 0, 0, 0, 2.0 after moving p1 up for eight units we go from 2.0 to 10.0 and then from this point here after we move for another five units to the right we got 5.0 and 10.0 right any one of you lost or you are fine? Are you following? Good. If, I go, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Right. Okay, so that's about moving. So why don't we do for, for this? Actually, I think I pretty much did, did uh, number six for you as well, I think. Oh, that's okay. So why don't we do, so let, let me give you two minutes to do number seven. In the point class, number seven, define the uh, move left and move down methods. And then, number eight, just try to move point, uh, just try to move P2 somewhere to the left and somewhere down as well. Try to do exactly the same exercise that we just did. Okay, try to do that. So I will leave number seven, number eight to you. Take like two minutes. You should do that very quickly. Can we change uh, the way it's done and just say move horizontal and move vertical and then allow negative numbers to be placed in? Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah.
You can also do that, yes. That's definitely fine. Yeah, so you're gonna increment the move left and move down for me. And then try to do some uh, test cases, you know, try to use them in the uh, tester. <coughs> Hello. There you go. Is it this thing too? No, that's not. That, that one's not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are we done? Okay, let's have a look. So now in the point class, you're going to define move left. So first of all, move left, you will be rather than incrementing the value for x, you're going to decrement the value for x, right? So you say move left, I'm going to take one parameter, units, and then I'm going to decrement the uh, value for x using the units. Similarly, you can also have the move down method here, and then you can say, it also takes one parameter, units, and then you're going to, going to decrement the value for y by units. Okay, that should be rather straightforward since you got move up and move right defined for you already. And now if you go to the tester here, you can just do anything you like, you know, to, to the P2. So for example, I'm just saying initial location for P2 is simply 3 and 4. And first of all, I'm going to move P2 down for 8 units. And after that, I should expect to get 3 and then minus 4, right? And then after that, I'm going to say I'll move further uh, P2 left for 5 units. And that's going to decrement the value of xx by 5. That'll give me minus 2, right? Something like that. Okay, so if you actually run that, it's going to be something that you will get, you will observe. You actually observe the changes of the points in between movements. Are we good? Okay. Okay, so after this, we're going to move on to the next exercise. So now we are done with 7, 8, and now we're going to do number 9. Okay, number 9 here, it's uh, a little bit tricky. So now we would like to calculate the distance between points. So number 9 is going to calculate the distance between a particular point and the origin in the, in the plane. Remember the origin has 0, 0 as the location. So you want to calculate distance between the point and the, uh, in the origin. 
that's how you would like to do some formula there, right? So if you x minus, uh, you can see the formula there. It's basically going to be x minus 0 to the square to the power of 2 plus y minus 0 to the power of 2 and then take the square root. So that's what you learned from high school, right? So let's see how we can do that. So if you go to the uh, point class and this time, rather than having a void return type, we're going to return something. We're going to return the distance between the uh, point and the origin. So because x and y are double, so the distance might be double as well. So we'll say double here. That means we're going to return double. And what's going to be the name for the method? We can say get distance from origin. And then, in this case, we're not going to take any parameter actually because we know it's going to be the origin we're going to calculate the distance from. So we don't need any. Can you maybe shut the window and use it as loud? Well. Yeah, thanks. If it gets too hot again, then we'll actually yeah, open it back. OK, thank you. So now, let's say we are actually going to return something from this method here. So what should we return? So we're going to have, let's, let's declare some variable here. Let's say double distance. So how do we calculate distance between the, uh, the point and the origin? So we know that somehow we need to do x squared plus y squared and take the square root. And as we learned before, how do you calculate a square root? You can use the math class, right? So you would say equal to. So why don't why don't you try to write the uh, expression yourself on your computer, and then I'll write it as well on the screen. But try to not look at my solution before you struggle with that. It should be quite simple. So the the line you want to put here is to somehow to use the math function, the square root method, and then you want to say you want to say x square plus y square, and then take the square root. But how do you say that? If you're done or you're not sure, uh, you can look at now on the screen. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. So basically, you're trying to use the square root function from the math class. And then you would say x squared. So you can go a little bit more uh, further than this. x squared can either be x times x, or you can try this. This will also work. You can also do things like this. You can say math dot power x to the power of 2. That will also do, right? Math dot power y to the power of 2. This will also work. OK, are we OK with the uh, calculating distance? So now, after we have done this calculation, we would like to return this value here. So this is a keyword in Java for you to do this. So we're going to say for this method here, we're going to return something back to whoever is using the method. So we say return and distance. Or you can simply say return this expression here. That will also do. But I just want to separate the steps for you. OK, so basically, line number 33, we try to calculate the distance. And line number 34, we try to return the distance, right? How do we use that? If you go back to point tester here, and let's see. So we would like to know the distance, let's say, let's declare a new variable here, uh, just after, right, uh, right between P1 and P2. Say double, uh, let's say from, uh, let's say, distance p1 to origin, like something like that. You can have whatever name you like. 
is equal to, I would like to know what's the distance between P1 and the uh, origin. So I would say P1 again, because I want to know something specific about P1, so I would say dot. And then, if you see get, you will see that one of them is get distance from. If you do that, and say it, right? And then, if you try to print it out, system.out.println, you can say distance from P1 to origin is, and then you can say distance. You can print out the value of that variable there, right? And if you try that, let's see what you get. Run the program, you can see somehow, you can see the latest location for P1 is actually 5 and 10. So you get uh, 5 square plus 10 square. So you get 125. So sounds right because the square root of 125 is about 11 something. Okay, so that's the distance. Are we good? Good. Okay. Yeah, let's do something similar. Calculate the distance from P2 to origin for me, and then print it out. Okay, try not to look at the screen. I'm going to do it, but try to do it yourself. And when you are done, this should be something you should have. So you can see line number 27 there. I'm trying to declare a new variable. Rather than distance from P1 to origin, I have distance P1, uh, sorry, P2 to origin. And now you can see I'm also trying to call the method get distance from origin. But now I'm trying to call this method on P2 rather than P1. That's the difference. Because it's different objects here, so the calculation will actually use different numbers. So if you try to print out the uh, value there, it will say distance from P2 to the origin will be that distance there. Okay. If you try to run the program, let's see if that makes sense. If you see that, you can see the latest uh, location for P2 is minus 2 minus 4. So 4 plus 16, 20. So the square root of 20 is about uh, 4 point something. Yeah, that's about right. right. Yeah, that's how you calculate distance. So now, a slightly more challenging exercise is for you. So what about, let's say, for line, uh, for task 11? That's for you. So let's say you want to define a new method here. So now, Rather than saying you're always going to calculate the distance between the points and the origin, you will like to calculate the distance between point and other points. So in this case, the method is going to take some inputs, right? Remember the get distance from origin does not take any inputs, but this time, this method here is going to take some inputs, which is like other points. And then you're going to figure out what's going to be the distance between current point and other point. See if you can do that. I'll give you about two or three minutes, or maybe five minutes to, to see if you can do this exercise. Yeah. What's the purpose of? Oh, return. So return simply means somehow, when you are trying, uh, let's say like the, uh, 33. For 33, you're only trying to calculate something, but that value there is not available to whoever is calling the method yet, it's not available yet. So when you say return, that means you're gonna return some value back to whoever is using the method. So let's see here. If you go to the tester here, so now you can see that, for example, have a look at this line. So when you say distance uh, P2 to origin, I'm trying to assign some value to this variable here. So I need some value there. But when I say P2.get, distance from origin. 
So somehow I'm going to go to, going to execute the body of this method here. And then at the end, I need to get some value out of that. So the return is actually going to, going to give me that value. Yeah. So once I get that value here, I can assign that to the variable. <clears throat> okay, so now please try to do <clears throat> this uh, new exercise here. So you'll try to define a ma new method here that's going to look very similar to the get distance from origin. Except now this time you're actually going to take one input parameter like another point. And then you're going to figure out the uh, distance between that point and the current point using the formula I put on the paper, right? Task 11, and see if you can do that. If you can do that, go to the tester and try to calculate the distance between P1 and P2. <coughs> okay, So first of all, you have to get a signature of the method right. That's the first step. So please make sure you do that. I'll just uh, give you how the signature look like in about a minute, but I would like you to try that first before I give you a solution. So it's not um, resolved into one. So it's just one of the time which you do. Mm. So actually, P1 is actually what we created in the tester. So they're separate ones. Now we have different things. Somehow, because we got the uh, current point, which is X, so we only have to take another point. So another point will be X. Yeah, one point will be X. Yeah, so, uh, Now, don't worry too much. I think uh, getting the signature right first is going to be uh, the challenging first step. Let's imagine this. How are you going to use this method here? Let's think about that first in order to fig figure out the signature. Let's go back to the point tester here. So let's say, think about how we're going to use this method here. Somehow, I would like to figure out what's going to be the distance between P1 and P2. The way I'm going to write this is to say, let's say I have some double here, and say distance P1 to P2. Eventually, that's how I'm going to use it. Saying that equals, and I would like to say P1 dot get distance from P2. That's how I would like to use it. Also, uh, the method doesn't exist yet. I'm just trying to show you how I 
proposed to use it. And then I'll define a signature accordingly. So you can see here, I'm trying to say, well, I got P1 here. I would like to know what's the distance from P1 to P2. You can see P1 here is the object we are trying to call the method. And P2 is the argument value for the method. Right? So now you can kind of see how the signature of the method should look like. So somehow you can see the method should take one parameter of type point, right? So now how do we do that? So if you go there, so now we're going to say, again, you're going to return the double. So now we are in the point class. You're going to say get distance from and then point other. So this means whenever you try to call this method here, you're actually going to pass another point in order to calculate the distance between the two points, right? And now, so there are actually two, two x's and two y's we have to manipulate. So for other points, we have other.x and other.y. And for the current class here, we have x and y. So how do we calculate distance between the two points using x, y, and also other than x, other than y, right? So remember the formula, so you can see the formula I gave to you for task 11 there. So somehow you would do something very similar as before. Let me just copy that. So now rather than, uh, so now I would like to actually uh, do, I would say the current point is x minus other dot x, okay? And then I would say y minus other dot y. That's how you should do it. So you can see that's the expression here. So you can see x refers to the uh, attribute x over here, and y refers to the attribute y over here. And now we are trying to ca calculate to see what's the uh, distance from x to other dot x. And then what's the value for y? to what other than y, calculate the difference and then take the square and then the square root. That's what you should do. Yes. It's not, it's a parameter of the method. Because if you actually put it as the uh, as an attribute of the class, then you certainly cannot do something like this. This is what we would like to do. We want to say p1 dot get distance from p2. You don't actually want to say you want to set the p2 to be something and then calculate. That's not a way to go, right? Okay, so uh, let's uh, make sure you follow this. So now let's think about how this is going to be run. So now if you look at this line over here. So we are trying to call p1 dot get distance from p2. So p2, if you think about it in a template, Level. P2 is like the other that we define for the gravity, right? So now <coughs> if you actually try to calculate, you would say the square root of x minus other dot x to the power of 2 minus uh, p1 dot y minus p2 dot y to the power of 2 and then take the whole thing uh, square root. Right? That's how uh, the thing is going to be. Happens? No? Okay. Okay, that's how you do uh, exercise 11. And also 12 as well. Okay, let's do one more thing. So this is actually calculate the uh, distance between distance between P1 and P2. Okay, and then let's print out something here. You can say system dot out dot print line, and then we're gonna have p one. Uh, let's say distance between p one and p two is the distance of p one p two. Okay, let me do one more thing for you. Calculate basically p1 dot x minus p2 dot x, 
and it's going to be to the power of 2 plus p1 dot y minus p2 dot y to the power of 2 and then you will take a square root and remember uh, I'll just say square root so this is sort of the uh, calculation that will be performed when you actually call the method so I just need to write a math about square root so basically you can see here we're going to have p1 dot x minus p2 dot x so p2 here is like the other for the parameter Yeah, so here I say, so this length is rotation force to the power of 2. Okay. Again, so I think it's good to emphasize again. So when you say p1 dot x, so if you go to the template level, p1 dot x really refer to this x over here. And then other the, uh, p2 dot x really refers to this other here, other dot x. Okay. That's something for you to think about. Okay, let's do another line here. What, how do you calculate this? So what we just did was to calculate distance between P1 and P2. How do you calculate distance from P2 to P1? I know it's going to be the same, but the calculation is going to be slightly different. Very good, exactly. Please, uh, let's write it. Very good. And now, if you try to do that, I mean, oh, you feel free to copy and paste. I'm going to change something for you. Distance between P2 and P1. But now the calculation here will be slightly different. We're going to have P2 dot X minus P1 dot X and then P2 dot Y minus P1 dot Y. And then let's declare a new variable here. Distance, distance P2 to P1. And here we say P2 that gets distance from P1, distance between P2 and P1, and P2 to P1. If you try to do that, you actually get, first of all, you will get exactly the same answer. That's not surprising. But the way you calculate the same answer is different, right? One is from P1 to P2, the other one is from P2 to P1. Okay, final two exercises for today. Final two. Okay. Now we would like to somehow to store an array of points. First of all, if you look at number 13, the first exercise uh, I'll, is up to you. This one, create another three points, P3, P4, and P5. P3 will be 7, 9, P4 will be 8, 1, and P5 will be minus 2, minus 4. Do that for me, please. And then we we'll go from there. If you look at task number 13, the first small task over there. So create P3, P4, P5 for me. P3, That's not too difficult. Okay, so P3, P4, and P5. So now let's say we have, so now we have what P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. All of them are instances of the same template point. And as you can see, the locations are completely distinct. So now let's see, we would like to have an array of points. Okay, how do we do that? So there are two ways to do this. First way, you can say, I have an array of type points with a square brackets. Of course, that's the one dimensional. If you like, like that to be two dimensional, you can say that, but that's not the purpose of this exercise. The point array, let's say, simply say points. Number one way to do it would be to say, 
P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. That's uh, the first way. Okay. What about second way? How do you think the second way should be done? I'll say that again. I didn't. Correct, but before that, you had to create the array first, right? Yeah. Very good. So that's uh, approach number one. The approach number two, I'm just going to show you. So you can say point array again, point equals new, point size, let's say five. So you're going to create a, an, uh, an array of points of size five. And now we're going to assign each slot individually. So you can say points zero is equal to P1, and I'm going to just copy and paste. And then one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five. That's the second way. And that shouldn't be too surprising to you, right? Now, how do we write a loop to say we would like to print out the locations for each point in the array? For loop. For loop, very good. Write it for loop. That shouldn't be too difficult. And I would expect the formats of the location to be something like as before. So for example, before we said P1 is at location, you know, with the parenthesis and separated by comma. Something like that. Try that and then I'll also do do it on the screen at the same time. But I'm not trying not to look try not to look at my solution yet. Okay, when you're done, and then I will try to give you some hints. Okay, let's have a look. So this is sort of the copy and paste from the previous line. Before, I, if I know already I want to print out the location for P1, I would say P1.x and P1.y. But now, since I'm trying to iterate through an array using some index i, so how do you think? If this has to be part of, that's, so we are trying to do repetition, right? That's the motivation for loop. So how should I replace a P1 by here? Rather than saying it's a P1 specifically, it's going to be whatever elements I'm looking at right now. I dot x. <laughs> I dot x. That's a uh, good try. But if you try that, it wouldn't work because error. error. Let's say I does not have a field or attribute x. Uh, I think you're getting there. Point you're like, so points I. Points I exactly. So I think what Bowden said was very close because somehow you know the point you're trying to get an x from is really the the point at index i, <coughs> right? So see, i dot x is doesn't really make sense. I is so what you want to say is to say, I would like to get the points at index i in the points array. So here you would say points. To get an index, you would say use square brackets here. And points i dot y. The syntax here might look a little bit funny to you because somehow you can see you have square brackets, you have dots. Looks very ugly, but the way to look at that is to the left hand side of the dot, you actually are trying to retrieve an object of type points. And on the right to the dot, you're actually trying to retrieve the x attribute from the points. So it doesn't totally make sense to Java compiler. Yeah. 
No, that's how we print, print them out. Print them out. Let's uh, run the program and see what you get. If you do that, you can see now this is sort of the output. I got one, two, three, four, five, five points at different locations that seem to work. Okay. Now do another loop for me. But now in this loop, do the following. For each point in the array, move them up for two units. For each of the points in the array, move them up for two units. Up. Up, up for two units. Each of the points. Of course, you can say P1 that move up to, P2 that put move up to, and etc. But now, since we're trying to use the loop to automate the replications, so it's going to be something very similar to what I just wrote. Okay, move every point up for two. How do you do that? Of course, the loop header is going to be very similar. Questions? Yeah. You, you. Uh, points i and then you want to call the method, right? Because points i will give you the points at that particular location, uh, index, right? And then somehow you want, you want to call the uh, the appropriate method to move it up, right? That's sort of the idea. How much do you want to move it up to? Two. Two, please. Mm -hmm. And if you're done, it should be as easy as this. Okay. So we are still trying to run a for loop, but uh, well now we're going to say this time we're actually going to move up by two units for every point. So you can see every time as the value for i changes from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, it's going to call the move up method on different locations in the array. Right? Every time. First time you're gonna say point zero dot move up. And then second time you're gonna say point one dot move up and then etc. So it's going to move the uh, the point accordingly. Now after this, let's verify that this actually works. So just copy and paste this part of the loop to actually print out the locations again. Okay, just copy these two lines and see how the uh, locations of them changes. Before that, you can say that you can put a system out the print line to say system the out the print line. You can say after moving all points up for two units. And then you just copy and paste this loop here and see what's the refreshed locations. Okay, so now you will see that. You can see before we move every point to uh, up for two units. So you can see now x remains the same, but now from 10 to 12, minus 4 to minus 2, 9 to 11, and etc. Right? So move every point up for two units. So far so good? Okay, if you're good, now final exercise for the day. And then that's up to you. Now, say uh, let's do the following. We are going to move all the points in array. Uh, let me let me put another. Uh, let me put a question in words, so it might be as easier for you to follow. Let me put it in English. Move all the points in points that are above the y. Uh, okay, uh, let me say it this way. For for each point in points that is above the x axis, move it up two units, uh, let's say three units, and then move it left four units. How about that? So that's a task for you, last one for the day. 
very similar as before, but now we're not going to move all the points. We're only going to move those who are actually above the x-axis. So what does it really mean to be above the x-axis? Which value is positive? Very good, yes. Right, so sometimes we need a selection here, right? So that would just complicate your loop a little bit. Only a little bit. And now you're going to make two movements rather than one. Yeah, and the final x is by three there. And then you'll be dismissed. Yep, try that. And then meanwhile, I'm going to put in Eclipse. Uh, I'm going to put it here, don't worry. Move it up 3 units and move it left 4 units. And after all the movement, please uh, reprint the locations for each point to make sure that works. I do have the solution on the screen, but please try to complete your task first before you look at them. So it shouldn't be that challenging. I'll give you one more minute and then we'll go over a solution together quickly. Got it? No? Oh, okay, yeah, it's good to know. I, I 
it's not a big deal. How many of you folks think it's very long? Don't know about that. Okay, let's go over it very quickly. I think most of you got it already. We're still going to run a loop, and now this time we're going to say if that's above the x-axis, and the way we check that is by having a look at the attribute value of y. So we can say for each point, we're going to go x, get x's their y attribute value. If they're larger than zero, we're going to move up and move left, right? And then later on, we're going to print it out. The uh, locations again. If we try to do that, and you can see that, for example, you can see, uh, let's say for this point, certainly it's above the y -x, uh, x axis. You can see that one has been changed accordingly. But this one here, that's below the x axis, so that, that one stays unchanged, right? Okay. That'll be about it. So I think uh, by Monday, so please review the uh, two exercises we have done this week. The one is the person, the other one is the points. So try to, again, to review the ideas about classes and objects and also methods and see how the attribute value can be different. And when you call methods on different objects, how the effects can be different. So I'm going to review all the concepts again, more formally and systematically on Monday. Okay, thank you. So I'll see you on Monday. Have a good holiday.